Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Energy transition opportunities and risks are coming to the fore almost daily. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some recent developments. Hi Terence. Hi Sinal. On the opportunities front, there is a feeling that a clear net zero commitment could offer South Africa a new development pathway. Yes, I think this sort of message is coming out at different levels. We see at the Presidential Climate Commission in their response to our nationally determined contribution pledge, basically saying let's up the ambition so that we can really tie, hitch our wagon to this green industrialization and to a low carbon uh, and climate resilient future, which is really where the world is going. We've seen that then we saw at a PCC event, the former deputy finance minister and state capture whistleblower, Nkabisi Jonas, making a case for this being coming our new developmental pathway. You know that our, our past development pathway is very much linked to our minerals and energy complex and to commodity exports. And that's not going to go away under the new, uh, a, a new economy, but it can't be a minerals and energy complex that's based on coal anymore. It has to be based on our wind and solar resource, which we know is formidable. And there is a potential here to produce uh, renewable electricity cheaper than most countries in the world. And therefore, there's a whole lot of opportunities around that. One uh, that uh, um, Mr. Jonas mentioned is really to have an industrial, green industrial base that develops around renewable energy. We know we're going to have a, a large rollout, e even with the constraints in the integrated resource plan. We've got a large wind and solar rollout up to 2030, and we need to build industry around that. But also, uh, as South Africa's sort of star has waned in the world, we used to be the poster child of democracy when Nelson Mandela was our president. That probably is not the case anymore and, and, and democracy is a little bit out of vogue in the world anyway. But we could become uh, the, uh, the poster child of the just transition in, in Kabisi Jonas's view and this can provide the new vision that South Africa is seeking for its new development and economic pathway. As more renewables enter the system there is growth potential for hydrogen and energy storage. Yes, again here, on, say on the industrialization front, I think uh, definitely replacing coal exports with, a, for instance, hydrogen uh, exports could be a, a major opportunity for South Africa. We know that obviously there's a lot of appetite for coal at the moment, ironically, in the world because we haven't transitioned to these new systems and we need the coal. Uh, and as coal mines close or are not opened around the world, our coal is in high demand, so we're getting very good prices. Uh, at the moment for our coal, but eventually that, that opportunity to export our coal is going to uh, dissipate and we need to find a new export. And one of, the, one of those, and uh, a large opportunity, is in the form of green hydrogen, more specifically green hydrogen derivatives, because green uh, hydrogen itself is quite difficult uh, to store and transport. And there is a big opportunity to, to beneficiate that green hydrogen domestically into uh, green ammonia or green steel, etc. So that is something that uh, I think is going to open up. As you have this really large renewables installed base, there's going to be periods of the day where you're going to have this surplus. So there's a lot of talking uh, talk about power to X. You're going to have this X surplus, which is basically free electricity. What are you going to do with it? And one of the opportunities is to uh, produce green hydrogen. The other opportunity is to store it in batteries. And here we also have an opportunity not just to, st uh, to stabilize our electricity system with more batteries, energy storage, but actually become an industrial uh, manufacturer of, um, of, uh, of batteries. We know we have certain of the minerals that are needed in these batteries, vanadium comes to mind, but there are others. So these are two opportunities that could emerge. The ESCOM debt issue and the lack of a clear country commitment to net zero remain constraints. Yes, I think, uh, you know, Eskom ironically needs more debt. <laughs> the issue is that there's an um, a, a opportunity here for Eskom to transition more rapidly than it is currently into the new world of energy, but it needs this concessional finance, this climate finance to do so. But because they've got this 401 uh, billion rand unsustainable overhang, which they can't repay through doing business as usual, there has to be a debt solution. So unless that that is put out of the way. I think Eskom's role in the transition is under a threat. And uh, I think also the opportunity for South Africa to, 
to crowd in a lot of this climate finance that's going to become available is a threat. So some sort of resolution unfortunately falls on the Treasury, it falls on the taxpayer. But there has to be a resolution if you want Eskom to be a flywheel in this transition, not just as it is currently a constraint. And then obviously the, the, the lack of a, a, a net zero commitment to 2050 is a problem. Because I think, as I, as I mentioned right at the beginning, we need to hitch our wagon to this new uh, economy. And unless you really have made the commitment to do that uh, through a net zero commitment, which we see a lot of countries are doing at the moment, it's going to be hard to be the counterparty. So I think South Africa's um, updated draft NDC, which only takes us to just beyond 2030, I think obviously we won't be net zero by then, but we need to signal that we have a commitment to be a net zero economy by 2050. There is also a lack of a common vision and action plan around the just transition. Yes, this is a, a as Nkabisi Jonas says, if we're going to be a, a poster child for the just transition, so this is a transition that leaves nobody behind because we know we've got this huge coal value chain and we've got a lot of communities, workers and businesses that are linked to that. And you need to find a way uh, if you're going to transition over a long period. This is not a quick transition. That's, uh, that's why uh, there's a lot of view that why have a just transition? You know, we've had disruptive uh, 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 technology changes in telecoms and we didn't have a transition. We've had other technology changes from the horse and cart to the, the internal combustion and we didn't have a just transition. But here you can see it. You've got visibility and these are, uh, these are generally geographically bound uh, places where people are vulnerable. In South Africa's case, it's the hotspot is in Pumalanga. So we, we need to craft, and that's why the climate finance is important, the debt resolution is important, the vision to net 50 is important. We need to crowd in that finance to allow us not only to build this new energy economy, which unlocks all those other opportunities and uh, puts us not at risk as we try and trade in a world that is decarbonizing, but we, we also have to have this uh, platform for justice um, um, and for the cushioning for those people and we won't do that unless we get all these building blocks in place so we need to get our mind around net zero the just transition and have a social consensus on what that means and have us all pointing north so that we start uh, really uh, moving in a way that's uh, concerted and clear and that uh, the rest of the world can support thank you that's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.